Benjamin, you were you are nominated in this year's APRA Awards for The Snowman. Mm -hmm. Tell us about The Snowman and the music for it. Uh, so the music for The Snowman is actually, well, it's actually quite special to me because um, one of the pieces in it uh, was the first time that I got a feeling which I, I judge good music on. And it's literally a feeling of tingles going up and down the back of my spine or the back of my neck. Um, and one of the pieces in, a, in The Snowman did that to me and it was the very first time one of my own compositions did that to me. So uh, yeah, it was very special to me in that way. Can you describe the music, what kind of music it is and what's the film? Um, so the film is, is really crazy. The this, this story sounds like a Hollywood blockbuster almost. Um, so it's a documentary. Uh, and the director's father, uh, when she was little, uh, they're from Scotland, she went, uh, the director's father went to Antarctica to teach astronauts how to survive in extreme conditions. And while he was there, he stumbled across a nuclear dumping site. And um, so the CIA found out about it and then they gave him a chemical lobotomy. Um, and so he, he went there sane and he came back totally insane. And he'd, he'd been uh, crazy or, you know, uh, for the last 30 years or so. And so it was, it's the daughter's um, journey into finding what happened because it's up until the point of him finding the dumping site then after that it's all conspiracy because there's no proof or anything like that. So that's half of the film and the other half is a, a really kind of poignant, um, sad and bittersweet, I suppose, uh, family reunion uh, and redemption kind of a family story as well. What were the challenges that you had to overcome in writing the music for that film? Uh, well, it, there was, okay, the challenges in, in writing the music for The Snowman was, I suppose, twofold in, in getting a real kind of conspiratorial, eerie kind of sound and then mixing that also with the kind of sad, redemptive, um, melancholy uh, piece as well. So, so there's kind of ebbs and flows in it. And it's also very much to do with um, you know, the darkness of the mind and, and things like that. Yeah. It was fun. It's appropriate though that it's to do with the mind because um, you, you, you say that you use dreams as part of your tools in composing. Can you tell us a little bit about how that works? Uh, yeah, so I've, I've used dreams for, for ages in my composing, um, even back when I was in a band. Um, Essentially, I, I go to bed uh, with, with a problem or a, a want of a solution in my mind and uh, I kind of ask my dreams to tell me what to do in a way and I wake up with ideas that I've used many, many times uh, in my compositions and, and also just in my life in general as well. So do you hear music in your dreams? Yeah, and sometimes actually, so I do hear music in my dreams, um, sometimes I I try and recreate the music that I hear, but it, it just goes off in another tangent and I've kind of lost that one forever, but I create something else fun or great. You're also nominated for a children's TV series yep. and the music for that. Uh, tell us a bit about that. Okay, so the children's series is uh, called Itty Bitty Ditties and I'm co-nominated with the lyricist uh, Tom Bettany um, and it's a series of, of short uh, songs that have, that were played on ABC and they're just nonsense songs and fun songs um, about uh, the main character is Brian the Budgie and uh, he just uh, goes through the world and go through um, like singing about the things that he sees and every every song is a different genre of music which plays to my kind of love so much um, and it's it was just so much fun doing it because as I said it was just Every genre different, fun, fun, fun. Is there a musical idiom that you would be happy to be tagged with? Um, yes, actually, there is a musical idiom I'd love to be tagged with. Uh, people ask me, what kind of music do you make? 
Uh, and years ago I came up with an answer because I, I didn't actually know and I just said good music. So I don't know if that's an idiom but I'll just say good music. <laughs> what are the musical influences that you've had through your life in terms of like people who you've looked up to, musicians you've admired and or musical styles? So straight off the top of my head is definitely the Beatles as, a, as easily number one. Uh, my favourite classical composer is Bach, uh, J.S. Bach. Um, but um, I'm actually, I, 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 a few years ago I felt like I, I was, I called myself a musical racist or a musical, you know, um, because I used to um, not like certain genres of music. And then I actually went, actually that's not fair because I, I haven't gone into those, delved into those genres and studied them. And inevitably I, I just find music that I loved all the time in it. So any genre of music now is just brilliant to me. Only the best of it, though. Only. How do you determine best? I mean, you know, you, have, you were saying before you had this personal test that the hairs on the back of your neck stood up. What other tests are there? Um, OK, so, yeah, tests of good music is, well, it's very personal, obviously. So there's the feeling of the hairs standing on the back of the neck, and that's, that's different to, for everyone. But sometimes it's only elements and parts because I'm a composer I really kind of um, compartmentalize all the parts of the music in my mind um, so it might have a great beat or you know just a certain sound or just a little uh, melody or or then the whole thing might be great um, and then on the on the other hand like some really bad music is really hilariously funny so then therefore it's really good as well Tell us about your uh, venture, your project with the 1922 silent movie Metropolis. Tell us how it started, what you did and where it went. Oh, okay, so um, for Metropolis, uh, the rescore that I did uh, was in my band, um, The New Pollutants. It was me and another guy, uh, Tyson Hopridge, DJ Trip, And we approached the Adelaide Film Festival in 2005 to do a rescore. Um, and they loved the idea uh, because our the sound of our band it was very much a kind of um, a gritty electronic uh, down tempo uh, trip hop kind of feel, which which I suppose married very very well with the visual aesthetic and um, thematic uh, qualities of Metropolis. So we went about scoring it, and then. Um, Performed it at the film festival, and then from there we we it went on to we went and performed it at the uh, what was it the Commonwealth Games uh, festival in 2006 in Melbourne, and we just performed it in the Opera House as well. And now we're going back and because there's a new version that just came out with an extra 25 minutes, we're going back and doing it all again, re you know redoing the new parts. And that work, did that kind of propel your interest in screen music or was that always an interest? Ah, uh, yeah, Metropolis definitely it was, it was the point where I was like, actually I can do this. And as my life as a, as a performer in a band, I, I felt like I had a limited lifespan because I, I, do, I used to just go crazy on stage, like I just loved going, like kind of going nuts. And it was almost like my body was kind of like starting to already wear out. And as a composer, I felt like I could just do that for the rest of my life. And um, I was always a massive soundtrack collector. I loved movies. Um, I got hundreds and hundreds of soundtracks just on record. Like, I love collecting them. I've got them all up in my house, everywhere. Um, definitely Metropolis got me into it. And is there anything that you won't do? I mean, is there, any, uh, is there a taboo area in music? I mean, I, I mean that in a musical sense. Yeah, so I, I think there is actually no taboos for me. I love when uh, a director of film has come to me and they, they want me to do a new kind of thing that I've never done before. I love that. Because it's for me, it's like learning. It's like, oh, exploring a new, new avenue and all those kind of things. Um, the taboo, I suppose, in a sense, is is more so if people just want me to copy things or, 
Yeah, it's really, I don't like that so much. And I, I suppose any composer doesn't really want to copy other people so much. We have lovely accompaniment from the uh, mm. birds outside, um, which brings me to this question about the use of non-musical instrument sounds, mm. uh, whether it be electronic or physical or screaming birds outside your window. Do you ever use that sort of stuff? Yeah, I use uh, kind of non-musical sounds all the time. Uh, well, as much as possible anyway. Uh, right now I'm about to do a documentary about a, uh, the ra you know, those old railroad man um, and woman movies where they're tied up on the railroad track and, um, you know, they have to get them off before the train. It's about an Australian guy who was, who was um, very famous in America at the time in those silent era. Um, and I'm using train sounds and kind of uh, industrial sounds as a part of the score you know, mixed in with music and I, I love the way that, you know, that melds. So how do you work? What is the, the process that you have in terms of discipline or time or, you know, are you, are you undisciplined or disciplined in the sense of, you know, I'm getting up at nine and working and... Uh, I'm very disciplined, so as far as uh, the way I work, yeah, I'm very disciplined, but not in a time sense. I have no uh, no set time in that in that way. I literally go if I if I feel like waking up at six o'clock in the morning because I'm really buzzed and inspired, then I'll do that. Or if I stay up till you know four a.m., I'll do that too. Um, my process is also very much at the start. I'm just I just think quite a lot and and think and get myself into the realm of, of the world of the music of the film mm. and then from there I collect kind of my sounds in my mind or collect sounds that I think are, you know appropriate and then I kind of go like a whirlwind from there. Is there anybody that you admire in, in screen composition? Oh, you've got this huge collection. Is that eclectic or do you focus on a particular kind? Uh, yeah very eclectic so my, my collection of uh, soundtracks, yeah, very eclectic. Um, I suppose that's, you know, again, that's a hard question for me because it's like who, the type of music I love is is so broad and varied. Um, okay, the, the 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 environment in which you grew up, how musical was that? Uh, so that's funny. The environment in my childhood was, I feel like it wasn't really musical at all, actually. But my mum keeps arguing with me, yes, it was, it was very musical. Um, but no one else in my family does music now or is, is uh, I suppose, professionally artistic or, um, uh, you know, everyone has an interest in art or music to a certain degree. But, um, yeah, I, I'm the only one who kind of really, you know, connected, connected with that. But I definitely played instruments from when I was a child. Um, my mum got me into that um, and I remember we also always used to listen to the radio, you know, Top of the Pops, because um, my mum's age, it was always the like 50s, 60s kind of stuff. Uh, and also she's now, then she, when we were growing up, also like Classic FM and so lots of classical stuff. Um, and she used to take us to going um, to concerts, but we'd sit outside um, and listen to it, especially the big concerts that were at, um, in, well, in Adelaide, it was at, they're at the uh, South Australian Cricket Ground, and it'd be like Michael Jackson and um, Paul McCartney, I remember very vividly as a child, kind of going and seeing them. It was great. Some people say that uh, scream music is, um, is a con, that it's like a laugh track. A con! <laughs> It's a it's a laugh track to tell the audience what to feel. Tell me what your thoughts are about the role of screen music. Um, okay, so th I think the role of screen music is is very much. Oh well, okay. Personally, I love. I hope this is going to sound um, maniacal, maybe. Or um, I love manipulating like an audience into feeling or or you know seeing a certain angle that maybe they they hadn't seen before or just you know expressing that what is there to a much greater value um, in a way I suppose you could argue it's a con of course uh, but oh, I love that con you know if you're gonna say it as a con yeah thank you very much Thanks.